What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Togo is a name a majority of us know, and since 1953, though in operation since 1935, they've produced 63 roller coasters worldwide. Of these roller coasters, we've seen the Ultra Twister models, Looping Mouses, variety of sit-down coasters, and perhaps most interesting, the stand-up model. With the first opening in 1979 at a park in Japan known as Yomi Yuri Land, the Togo stand-up model has been somewhat controversial since its inauguration, but nonetheless has a pretty exciting history. And in specific, I'll be highlighting that history through a coaster today that opened in 1985 under the name Skyrider. With one inversion, a length of over 2,000 feet, and speeds of up to 50 miles an hour, this coaster accommodated over 23 million guests throughout its lifetime before being dismantled, sold, and relocated. But of course, what is this coaster, and where did it come from? This is the story of Cavalino Mato's stand-up coaster, Freestyle. Skyrider started in 1985 at Canada's Wonderland, closed in 2014, and as I mentioned in the intro, was dismantled and sold to a park in Italy. Built by Togo, it was the company's second stand-up roller coaster following the now-defunct King Cobra, which debuted at King's Island the previous year, but to really understand the complexity and importance of the coaster, I'm first going to give you guys a brief overview of Togo themselves. Mr. Taichi Yamada, founder of Togo, started the Toyo Gorokuku Company in 1935 and built his first attraction, a 5-foot mechanical walking elephant, in one of Tokyo's neighborhood parks. In 1949, Yamada rebuilt his company and officially named it Togo before developing its first roller coaster in 1953. That coaster is still operational today and is considered to be Japan's oldest operating coaster. Togo would then go on to open Cyclone at Toshmeyan Park in 1965, which was Asia's largest coaster at the time, before selling coasters in Russia, Cuba, and China. Although the company produced a range of rides in Japan, it specialized in roller coasters for export and in 1979, Togo added standing trains to two of its existing coasters in Japan, Yomiuri Land's Momonga Standing and Loop Coaster, and Thrill Valley's Dongai, resulting in the world's first stand-up roller coasters. These two installations drew the attention of Taft King's entertainment firm, which went on to purchase Togo's Astro Comet, the world's first specified stand-up roller coaster, and installed it as King Cobra at Kings Island in Mason, Ohio, of the United States. The next stand-up to follow from then on, and the topic of today's video, Skyrider, would also debut in May of 1985 at Canada's Wonderland, and begin operation for what would be the following 29 years. During this time, the ride was actually fairly well received, and according to an article online, guests even recalled getting married in the queue. But by late August of 2014, park management opted to close the attraction, claiming it was located on a prime plot of land, in which they planned to add a new, large-scale attraction, though they were reluctant to reveal that fact. Today, you can see Yukon Striker in its place. In spite of all of this, Canada's Wonderland announced a special contest for adrenaline seekers in honor of its closure. The contest was launched on Canada's Wonderland's official Twitter page with the hashtag Skyrider Memories, and 24 lucky winners were chosen to ride Skyrider one more time before it closed on September 1st, 2014 at 8pm. The winners were also given a souvenir of one of Skyrider's roller coaster wheels engraved with the coaster's name and events and then shortly after, it was dismantled and loaded onto trailer beds. And then the next realization was made that the coaster was at least not being scrapped, but rather relocated. Bought out by a park in Italy known as Cavallino Mato, Skyrider would open just 10 short months later as Freestyle, with a whole new paint scheme and completely new concept in the area. This was easily that park's biggest investment and has since drawn in 10% more attendance on a yearly basis. So all in all, I think this coaster has a really cool and happy ending that features a pretty neat history to go along with it. There aren't too many coasters that can say they accommodated over 20 million riders throughout their lifetime, so though I didn't get to ride it, maybe I'll get to add to its new ridership over in Italy. As always, it's been a major pleasure creating new content for all of you, and I'd like to invite you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content or any of the other stuff we've been pushing out. It really does help, especially in reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so I appreciate anything you guys can do. Stay tuned for another video coming in a couple days, and until then, we hope you guys have a good rest of your days, and we'll see you all there. See ya!